your, some of your earliest reflections of, of West Point? Well, as I, I got to West Point within a month after I was ordained a priest. It was supposed to be for two months because it was the start of the expansion in 1965. But it went so well, there's a long story there, uh, that I, I lasted almost five years. Wow. Uh, it was a, a very important time of my life because I, I've always told seminarians, and I've been the rector of two seminaries for 12 years, that the first five years out of the seminary are as important as the five years you spent in the seminary. So my formation continued, my formation of the priest was very much influenced by what I saw and experienced at West Point. The discipline, the dedication, the enthusiasm, the, the sense of self-sacrifice, uh, all had a great effect on me. It, it, it solidified what I knew I should be as a priest. And uh, I will never, I will, uh, I, will, I will never regret a day that I spent there. You, you were there at a time in the 60s, um, late 60s, uh, when the nation had a conflict with Vietnam. Yeah. Uh, certainly there were protests. Uh, uh, how did you manage the spiritual development that's to be future leaders in the army during that difficult time in history? Well, I'm convinced that uh, the call to, to serve the country is a, is a vocation once it's accepted. Um, I don't think people in uniform have anything to be defensive about or apologetic for. And in those days, there was that temptation because people didn't like the military. And I've always said it's, it is a, it's a call, a highly Christian call. Uh, Christ said, uh, greater love no one has than to give his life for his friends. And we have kids overseas today giving their lives total strangers. Mm -hmm. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what are you doing except for peace? When, when you put on the uniform, you enter the service. And Christ defined himself as one who came to serve. Mm -hmm not be served. So uh, when lived to its fullest and noblest, the military life is a military vocation. It's a, it's a, it's a call from God. And uh, I have had many opportunities to repeat that to young soldiers uh, who were 18 and 19 and think that there's some conflict between uh, serving the country and, uh, and their Christian faith. Not true at all. Wow. I always compare it. We know that the uh, parable of the Good Samaritan. A certain man goes from Jericho, uh, Jerusalem to Jericho, and on the way he's attacked by, by bandits, and he's left half dead. Uh, three people passed by. The first two were very busy. They were high-ranking uh, in the faith of the day. They, they just passed by. The third was one who really had nothing to do with, with Jews. He was a Samaritan. But he stopped, and he bandaged the wounds and put them in a and in and so forth. My question is, what would have happened half hour before when that good Samaritan came by and this man was being attacked? Did he have a right to step back and say, I'll wait about 10 minutes when this attack is over? Or did he have a duty, an obligation, to step in and do what had to be done to put an end to that aggression? That's what our military is for, and that's what our military has done consistently throughout our history, and we should be proud of that. Moving on to a little bit uh, uh, different topic, I uh, understand you went to airborne school. I did. Did you volunteer for it? How did you, what, what were your thoughts going Well, in 1969, I asked uh, the new Cardinal, Cardinal Cook, if I could enter the military as a chaplain. And I said, I, I have it, I have it, assurances from the chief of chaplains that if I did enter, I, he would answer my request to go airborne and to go to Vietnam. And, uh, the car released me, and it was on my own uh, request. I was the oldest one, and I don't know how many were, were doing jump school, but I, I was the, the grandfather of the whole lot. You know, got a hard time from the from the black hats, they call it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. But it was fun. Uh, not always fun going through it, but looking back on it, it had a tremendous uh, effect on me as well. The whole three active years of the army did, especially sure. with the one in Vietnam. Wonderful. And when you, uh, when you deployed to Vietnam, uh, I believe it was with the 82nd Airborne? No, I was with the 173rd Airborne. Okay. And when they stood down, I spent the final few months with the uh, first half. And then, I guess a generation later, um, you came back to be the Archbishop of the Military Services. That's right. For, yeah. for a decade. Totally unexpected. Wow. Yes. Yeah, yeah I, was, uh, I was here in Rome 
for five years as head of the seminary here. And I was in New York for seven years as head of the seminary. I was made a bishop of Auxiliary to Cardinal O'Connor my last year uh, in the seminary work. And I thought I'd stay in New York. And he called me one day and said, uh, you've only been a bishop for a year, and now you're an archbishop. I couldn't, didn't know what he was saying. Mm -hmm. He said, the Holy Father's going to ask you to be the archbishop for the military. Archbishop Dumino was my predecessor, another New Yorker, and uh, he was failing in health. And, uh, it was a great move. I, I had a wonderful time. I liked travel. Uh, I liked uh, the work, uh, and certainly liked the, the people I was working with. And you, you do well. We went to, I assume, uh, uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. Didn't make respect. it into Afghanistan. Very hard. I was in Iraq twice. I tried to go every year, but I realized that uh, if I went there, well over. Uh, a hundred other endorsing agencies, and the head of those agencies would f feel they had to have the same opportunity, even though we were by far the largest. But I was able to, uh, to Iraq twice uh, and couldn't get over there any, any longer. I think one of the uh, uh, one of the great questions that the audience for the West Point Society of Philadelphia would like to know um, is that. Uh, uh, what you uh, learned and experienced at West Point, it's timeless values of duty on our country. How has that prepared you for your current responsibilities to participate in electing the next Pope? Oh, I, I think the whole military experience solidified the, uh, the, the sense of commitment and responsibility. And uh, this, is a, this is a high responsibility I have. And going into the conclave, I realize that. Uh, and I never thought I'd, I'd be in this position. Um, before the conclave, we have any number of conferences, uh, state of the church, uh, just to orientate all the voting partners. Um, I, I just think Providence had me uh, do these years at West Point and in the military uh, to, to, um, to, to set a foundation uh, for what was to come next. And this, working with the Christians in the Holy Land, uh, encouraging them in the difficulties they face, uh, has, has uh, been a result, I think, of my past experiences with, with the military. Um, so, so we'll see. It's, it's hard, to, uh, hard to make concrete what is a very spiritual uh, experience as a priest, as a chaplain, as, a, uh, as an archbishop, and now as a cardinal, um, nothing, there's no planning these things. Mm -hmm. it, it, God moves you around, you just say yes. You be in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. That's what you're trying to be. Great. Yeah. Well, I wanted to present you with something from the society. Uh, we have uh, on our board of directors uh, many that uh, uh, have known you and uh, said some just incredible things about your service and, and your, uh, what you've done for, for West Point, for the military, uh, for our nation. Uh, I know that uh, uh, Bill Deal, our vice president, has said uh, so many things yeah. about you. Uh, uh, Hap Trainer is, is another one oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, that uh, uh, says so many great things. And uh, Jim Oleski is another okay. uh, one that, uh, that uh, is, is working with your mom senior for, for the schedule at the, at the time. Uh, but on, on behalf of the rest of the uh, West Point uh, Society uh, uh, clientele and, and members, I wanted to make you an official um, honorary life member of our society. Uh, with all of the, uh, Thank you very much. Uh, all the there you go.